In this tutorial, you'll learn how to do this teleportation particle effect in Cinema 4D for your Minecraft animations. Stay tuned. What's up, Survivalists? It's Jay from Team WJ here to enhance your animations and tell your stories. If you're new here, I make Minecraft animation tutorials every Monday, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to not miss any uploads. If you're not, welcome back. Before I start this tutorial, I just want to mention that if you are a Patreon supporter, you will have access to this particle effect straight up, so you don't have to set anything up, you can just download it and use it as is. But for everyone else who isn't a Patreon supporter, this tutorial is for you. To start off, I want you guys to have a few prerequisites ready. For the particles themselves, if you don't want to make them, I suggest getting the particle pack by CB Expert. I'm going to link this in the description down below, it's a free particle pack. And in this particle pack, go grab the Smoke 3D Asset. In the Smoke 3D, we're just going to take the uh, 8E out. Delete the original, delete all the other textures except Smoke 8. If we open up Smoke 8, we can change the mix mode to multiply and then select a color. I'm going to do a darkish purple. And also remember to make that visible. Just to clear things up, we'll name this particle as well. Cool. You can learn to make this by yourself. It's literally just a plane that you can extrude upwards. It's not too hard. But I find that using someone else's asset just saves a lot of time. Now let's get to the actual particles. Go up to the Simulate tab up here and go down to Particles, Emitter. Rotate the emitter so that it's facing upwards, and you can see what it does now just by hitting play. Instantly, you should see a bunch of white lines start floating upwards. Let's drag the particle under the emitter. We'll select the emitter and check show objects. This way we can see if it actually works or not. And we're gonna change the following settings. So I usually like randomizing the seed a little bit, just hit like three random numbers like so. Let's shorten the lifetime down to about 30 frames. Let's bump the speed up to about 750 centimeters. The rotation, we're gonna have it at 90 with a variation of 100, and the end scale is gonna be zero. Now we're not done yet, so go to the emitter tab and change the angle horizontal and angle vertical to 180 each. Now if we play it, it should look something like this. Personally, I find there to be not enough particles, so I'm going to go back to the emitter tab, go back to the particle tab, and change the birth rate up to about 20 or 30. I'm on my laptop right now, so I'm going to just use 20. Instantly, we have a much better effect. If the range is too high for you, simply go back to the emitter and change the lifetime down. Let's try 15. This is more like what I had in the example. But let's say you wanted it to activate on frame 15. How would we do that? Simply go to the emitter, change the start emission frame to 15, and I usually add around 20 frames to it, so the stop emission would be around 35. Now if we play it, it should look something like this. You may be satisfied with that, but I want to add some extra spice. Let's make the emitter spin a little bit to add some more variation. Let's right click on the emitter, go to the Cinema 4D tags, and go to Expresso. If you've never used Expresso before, don't be scared, just kind of follow along and you slowly get the hang of things. Expresso basically allows you to work with different nodes. Let me show you an example. Right click in the Expresso editor, go to New Node, Expresso, General, and Time. The Time node basically counts forward in time, starting from zero all the way to whenever time ends. Right click again, go to New Node, Expresso, Calculate, Math, and this allows Expresso to do math. We'll get into why that's important later. Select the math node, go down to the data type down here, and change the function to multiply. Finally, let's drag the emitter in once over here, and again over here. And we can select the corners of these to make them bigger. This will just make things a bit more clearer for us. Select this little time circle at the end of the time node over here, and drag that into the first input. Click on the math node and change the input to down here in the parameters to one. This means that time multiplied by one will give us the output. And what does it output to? Let's drag the output node over here into the blue input of the emitter, go down to coordinate, rotation, and rotation B. So now time directly equals rotation. If we play it now, it automatically starts rotating. Now, I know you guys don't want to come back here every single time you want to change the speed of the rotation, so let's make that a bit modular. Select the emitter object, go into user data up here, and hit add user data. Name the data speed. Do not hit enter. If you hit enter, you close the window by accident. Do not hit enter. Simply click off in some empty space. Make sure the data type is a float. Have the interface as a float slider, and change the unit to real. Make the minimum value 1 and the max value 5. And make sure the default value is set back to 1, like so. This is how you create sliders in Cinema 4D. So now we have a slider here that goes from 1 to 5. Back in the Expresso Editor, select the red output and go to User Data Speed. Remember those 1 to 5 values? We can drag that into the second input of the math. This means that whatever value is in here directly affects how much the time is multiplied. So if we have the speed of 2 here, it goes twice as fast. 3 means 3 times as fast, and so on and so forth. What works for me quite well is a speed of 4, so now we can close off the Expresso Editor, and now it looks like this. If I move this back to 1, you can see how it's a lot slower. Move this back up to 5, you see how it's a lot faster. Again, if you don't want to go through the hassle of setting all this up yourself, you can support me on Patreon, and you have access to these files as well as many others. So make sure you go check that out. Hey! 
Do you want to learn animation but don't know where to start? Why not check out my Beginners to Advanced playlist designed to help you improve your animations right here. If this video has helped you, don't forget to share it and help your friends too. I'm a YouTuber trying to influence and change Minecraft animations for the better while working on my own animated series, Levislear. You can play a massive role in the development of Levislear by watching more of my videos or checking out my Patreon. With that said and done, this has been Che from Team WJ to improve your animations and tell your stories. Cheers!